Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery. Today we're going to be unboxing, well, a lot of things. Actually, in this video we're probably just going to unbox this, but this contains two knives. I was traveling recently and a whole lot of stuff that I either ordered or pre-ordered a long time ago all came while I was out, and so I've got a lot of things to unbox. Um, quick shout out, I want to say thanks to Cole, aka Tristate EDC. He sent me these, um, well he sent me this. Uh, a collection of sticker scraps. His wife runs a sticker printing business. If you need anything made sticker-wise, um, go check him out. Their prices are actually fantastic. Anyways, these are the scraps from the stickers, and they it's just like the white bits around, and they, they cut around, and they cut out, and it just works perfectly as these little address covers. So thank you so much, Cole. Uh, makes my life a hell of a lot easier. Anyway, this contains two knives that I pre-ordered from Urban EDC Supply. And if you order anything with something that is a part of a pre-order, they ship everything with the last possible item as it comes in. So what's in here, partially, um, some people have already gotten, and because they shipped a couple weeks ago, but mine waited until the second item was available too. Anyway, enough talking, let's open this up. I'm gonna use the Justin Lundquist Kaiser Delorme to open this up because one of the two knives in here is a Justin Lundquist. So look at that. Awesome little knife, by the way. Ho ho ho! And they always send one of these little stickers. Oh, those are cool. Some Swiss Army knives. Okay, let's do this one since I started with the Justin Lundquist Delorme. This is a Justin Lundquist Baby Barlow. So let's get this open. So when some, sometimes these boxes don't wanna come. And so what I do is I'll use a knife like this, insert the, the blade backwards and use this to push up and pop that out. It makes it a heck of a lot easier if a box doesn't wanna open up. Come on, yeah. Okay, classic Urban EDC supply. They always include one of these. It's often of the knife you're getting. In this case, that is a F5.5, one of my favorite knives from them, and one of the big reasons why I absolutely love Urban EDC Supply as a company. They do awesome collabs like that, and like both of the knives we're gonna see in this video. Um, whatever, I'll worry about that later. Let's actually get the knife out. Oh man, both the knives are gonna be tiny knives. And oh, I love the look of this. Yeah, okay, you can see I'll wait till I have this open. Justin Lundquist has a type. <laughs> Is it obvious at all that he made both of these knives? Actually, let me get another one out. I also have this. Another Justin Lundquist design. I am totally blanking what that one is called right now, but this one is a G10 Integral. Yeah, these clearly are all part of a theme. They all have the exact same kind of opening mechanism at the top. It's this top flipper that is super minimalist. And uh, I find it to be one of the more effective ones, but in part because these tend to be really, really well tuned. So this is by Wii, of course. This is by, like I said, Kaiser. This one, they don't say who the OEM is, but I suspect it is by Wii. And the reason why I suspect it is by Wii is because you see how like this one has a clip like this. This is like a pretty classic Kaiser clip at this point. It's really nice. It's um, like, it works really well. These are very, very nice clips. It's a milled tie clip. Well, one of the things that was really cool about this one, which name I'm still blanking on, you'll come to me at some point, is it has this really neat deep carry milled tie, bent tie hybrid clip that you can see has been milled out of a piece of material in this dimension and then bent curved down this dimension. It gives you this really nice deep carry, much, much deeper than you find on something like this, but it still has that milled tie quality and aesthetic to it that makes it just look a lot nicer um, than a standard deep carry clip. And this is a really nice clip. And if you look at the clip on this guy, it is the exact same design. Now, obviously you can tell different OEMs to make the same clip, but it's just like uncanny how similar it is. And so, I don't know. I suspect that this is made by Wii. Although a lot of knives from Urban EDC Supply are OEM'd through Riot. Um, so I don't know, maybe I can get the folks over there to tell me. Yeah, this is the Baby Barlow. Let's get this open. Oh, ho! Wow, that was easy. Okay, wait, how's this close? Whoa. 
Whoa! Oh my god, the action of that is so much better than I expected it to be. Holy crap! Um, another thing that makes me think that this is Wii is if you look at the way that this is done, um, this uh, liner right here has this kind of curved radius part right there and then jimping along the side. And it's something that I first noticed over here on the, um, on the, am I not focusing? Autofocus. I'm going to have to turn this off, turn it back on and get autofocus going in the middle. Maybe I can do it while I'm still, no, it won't let me do it while I'm recording. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah, I first noticed it here on the Baby Barlow, which is made by Wee Civivi, and it's this kind of like vertical uh, jimping that they're doing. It's really neat, and it's different how than they normally are doing jimping. You can tell it's different right here, but if you look at the way that this lock bar is done, it's the exact same thing again. It's these, there's just little similarities in how these are made that make me think that this is Wii. But this one has really, really nicely tuned action, like really, really good, but the drop on this, it's not that it's hard to do, but it's, it's definitely pretty shaky. You have to shake it a lot, and this, for the size of this blade, is insane. Holy crap. Okay, so this, I mean, I got distracted. I went off on a clip and other stuff. I went on off on the lock bar for even the stuff remarking on this blade. This is a two inch blade in a sheep's foot pattern. And this particular version has a stone wash here and a darkened stone wash back here on the titanium. Uh, I freaking love this blade. This is amazing. So this is the gen two of the baby Barlow. Um, Justin said that it is based off of the number 25 pattern from Great Eastern Cutlery. That's a, a traditional knife in the classic Barlow shape. And uh, Barlow, if you're not familiar with it, the handle pattern is one that kind of um, it's perfectly symmetric and then it just kind of like swells out like this. Like you see how it expands outward. It's a very simple pattern and this gives you really uh, kind of neutral ergonomics. And it's, some, it's something that people like, like Justin Lundquist have, I think, probably been fascinated with for a long time because he is just known for having wonderful, wonderful symmetry and straight lines in his patterns. The original version of this, which was also an Urban EDC Supply exclusive, was done with like, I think a clip point and there's just, there's little changes throughout. So one of the changes they did is they added this little chamfer right there to increase access. And that really, yeah, that makes it so easy to open this up. I've not handled the original, but I can imagine if this was gone, that that would be a hell of a lot harder to open. So that will just fall to my hand. I can't get over the action on that. I don't think I have ever handled a knife this small, a two inch blade with 0.9 blade stock, 0.09 blade stock that is this free fall. That is absolutely bonkers. It takes no effort. The action in this is amazing. Okay, so this entire thing, let's see here. There's a bunch of different versions of this. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot, I was talking about the blade. I'm so glad they, they updated to this. I don't particularly love clip points. That's not my favorite blade shape. I know a lot of people do, but I personally adore a sheep's foot blade. So this is like a perfect blade for me. And part of the reason why this is such a perfect blade for me is because a knife this size, I call these small knives uh, tiny box cuttery knives because they tend to work very well at kind of like box cutter utility knife opening tasks. And so something like this is designed to fit just like that. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Okay. This fits in your hand with the end, this is a small handle, right? But it fits in your hand with with your thumb right there, finger right there to just perfectly, yeah, oh my God. That's gonna be so incredibly good for just box opening, utility cut type, cut out shipping labels, cut out, out whatever you need to. Anything time you're cutting on a flat surface, this is absolutely perfect. And the sheep's foot blade is the perfect blade shape for that. You have just enough belly to be able to kind of uh, do a rocking cut, but when you're drawing back, but you also, the bigger deal is that you just can access the blade at different points, but it's super easy to get up to that tip. Oh man, I love this. Nice thin cut down there. So like behind the edge looks pretty thin. I would guess that that's a about 18 thousandths behind the edge. I don't really know. And this is very thin blade stock. So this is going to be a very slicey little knife. 
Um, <clears throat> it's not a particularly tall blade, but they've got practically a full flat grind. Now this fuller at the top is purely aesthetic. I mean, I, okay, fullers in general were introduced on knives as a way of providing a kind of a, a channel for liquids to drain away from the, the blade and out, out. And that's why if they're on like a military a combat knife, they've earned the name blood groove or something gross. Um, but the reality is that is they're for working in wet environments to have like water drain out. The other thing that they're used for is kind of traction on the blade. And so you'll find a lot of fuller knives are things that you can flick off of the fuller because you can get you can get like grip on it and flick the knife out. I bet if I have this closed and go like this, that I can probably flick off of that. Let me see if I can actually do this correctly. Aha! But the thing is, on this one, it's decorative because look, it completely vanishes. Oh, it doesn't completely vanish. Oh, look at that. This is not enough access to use this for flicking. Certainly not. But you actually can get right there. So I wouldn't say this is pro I don't I don't this probably this is so minimal of access that this probably is not designed to be a nail nick, but it actually technically does work as a nail nick making this potentially a two-hand opening knife. And uh these ones for example, yeah, you're not getting in there at all. And this you're not getting in there at all. So I was fully expecting this to be a one hand opening only knife, but you actually technically can get that in there. I wonder if that's I wonder if that's by design. Maybe I can ask him. Whew. One of the things that these fullers do when they terminate like this, um, they give you this interesting look at the top where you can see that this groove comes in and shrinks it right there. And it's just a kind of a cool looking aesthetic when you look at the way that the blade profile looks. It just looks neat. So I really like that. Overall, I think the, the other thing is that the sheep's foot blade just kind of fits and mirrors the overall straight line but curves of the Barlow handle. And so I think this is just such a well-balanced looking design at this point. <clears throat> Like I was saying earlier, this came in a bunch of different form factors. Um, there were like JG10 versions, OD Green, I think G10, maybe my Carta versions. Let me let me pull up one of the pictures. Yeah, there's OD Green G10, JG10, OD Green my Carta, uh, Black G10, and they all had different uh, inserts here. There's also a version that is full tie that was like a maybe like a bead blast tie, and it still had a stone washed uh, blade, but it didn't have a filler like a uh, sorry an insert right here. It just had a milled line around it, giving the same look as this, but without actually having a different material here. And honestly, that's the one that I thought I'd bought. Like looking back at this, since I ordered these back in September, looking back, I thought that was the one that I got, but I'm actually really glad that this is the one that I got. I looked at my receipt and I was like, oh, this is the one. And I I love the way this looks. I think the the black G10 here is a, a really nice, subtle, but still prominent contrast. I, I think this looks absolutely gorgeous. And these little lines that he, these are kind of like a signature design element for him. He doesn't do it on all of his knives. He obviously didn't do it here, but he does it on a lot of his knives. And here, this is completely flush. So this is just an aesthetic thing. But here, these are milled in, which means this is actually functional grip and it works pretty darn well. Yeah, that grips me, that locks my fingers in really nicely. And the reason why that's even more important on a knife like this is because this is a very small knife. You can see that with my medium glove size hands, I somehow am able to get full four fingers on that. That's crazy to me, but it's also really easy to hold this like this with just three fingers on it and my fourth finger on the back. But if I'm going to do it in a pinch grip, I, it's, it's, you know, a lot of times I'll hold a knife like this in a pinch grip if I'm doing like small little cuts or I'll hold it in a pinch grip like I was showing earlier where I'm, where I'm holding it like that. And right now my thumb is anchored against this. But you can also hold in a pinch grip like this if you're trying to like cut into something or you want your fingers completely out of the blade path. And this is, um, these little this little bits of kind of pseudo jimping right here really give you a secure grip. Even though this is so small, this feels fantastic in my hand. Like I said before, the Barlow handle pattern is designed to give you really kind of neutral grips. And so it will feel good no matter how you're holding it. It's not gonna feel any different in this direction if you're pulling on something versus this direction if you're pushing through something or pushing with your thumb right there. I can't imagine you would hold this knife upside down like this, but sure you sir can and it doesn't feel weird in my hand. God, I love the way this looks. I am just blown away by that action though. That is, I don't know. So 
it's a time like this that I need to pull out other small knives because this is a small knife. And uh, so these are my kind of contenders right now for my favorite small knives. And there's an obvious similarity on the table for these two. These two are actually pretty similar to each other. They um, they are very different in this dimension and they feel very different because this feels like a tank and this feels kind of featherweight, but they actually have nearly the exact same dimensions on this scale. Um, this one over here being thumb studs is different, but it's also pretty similar to this one. Uh, if you're not familiar with what these are, this is the Giant Mouse Ace Riv. This is the new holy version of the Three Rivers Manufacturing TRM Nerd. Uh, so glad I was able to get one of those. And this is the Baby Banner that I brought up earlier. And all of these knives are under two and a half inches. But this one that came in recently is I think the most obvious direct com competition to this. There aren't a lot of really high-end tiny knives. Um, it, there's plenty of tiny knives, but a lot of them are just kind of crappy and you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a great one because this is spectacular. Uh, but when this came out, this is the Pena X-Series Micro Apache. This is in particular is a lava flow uh, fat carbon version uh, that was a Crane's Cutlery exclusive. But this is, I think, the, like, the most premium small micro tiny box cuttery knife and it fits so well in your hand for this kind of pinch grip and i was so excited when i got this because this is just i love small box cuttery knives and this is just kind of like a, in a truly spectacular iteration of it but wow look at this they're basically the exact same size and this is going to just be a matter of whether or not you want you know, this aesthetic or this aesthetic, because we finally now have another version that is like full tie construction, cool insert materials, wonderful finishing, fantastic action. And yeah, these, I think these are really strong competition. I don't remember what these sold for as part of the pre-order. I could probably look it up. I think, I think this was like 240 on the pre-order. I don't know what it went on the full size, on the full price drop. Uh, they're completely sold out right now. Um, so unfortunately, if you miss this, you'll have to find one on secondary or wait for another drop. They sold really well, I think. I'm pretty sure they sold really well in the pre-order and the the drop sold out very, very, very quickly of the ones that they had left over already made. And so they might do another run of these. I'll, I'll, I'll talk with them and ask them if they are going to do another run. These, uh, I don't think these did sell as well. These were full price. These were, I think, what was that? Um, 270 bucks. So they're pretty comparable in price. And these, I think, just kind of sat on shelves. I was looking at stock at a couple different retailers and it didn't seem like people were picking these up. And I, I think the reason is because people are just thinking of this as if it were a, a an X series, Apache of some kind. And it's just like, well, they're thinking about it in terms of a larger knife. But if you come at this from the ex expectation of this being a fifth pocket, tiny box cuttery knife, this is so worth every single one of those pennies. And the, now I think, I think these are, these are really, really strong competition. It, it, there's, there's been high end small box cuttery knives for a while, but like not, not many at all. And these are all finger flickery ones. And so if you want something in that, uh, kind of top flipper, sleek, minimalist design, you finally have amazing options right here. Whew. Okay. Okay. So I adore this. I am so pleased with this. I'm blown away by that action. I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm stunned and thrilled by this knife. Um, let's move on to the other one because it actually belongs in the same conversation on small knives. Let's get these out of the way for a moment and let's bust this out. This one, let's see, is it going to open nicely? See, so yeah, that one just came. Ooh, bonked the camera. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, okay. So here we have yet another tiny knife, and ooh, ooh, there are some cool freaking details on this. Okay. Oh, I love that. Oh, that felt fantastic. <laughs> okay, so this is the Copita, and this is a Vox design, another like the Urban EDC F5.5 that I showed earlier in that little picture. This is another Urban EDC supply exclusive with Jesper Voxnays, and it is called the Copita. Uh, Copita is the Spanish word for small cup, literally small cup, uh, but a Copita, like if you were to shop for a Copita, I mean, maybe you will find 
small cups named that way like in general but what you're actually going to find is this so this is a copita and it is a uh, like a sherry glass it's a glass specifically sold for drinking fortified wine and a lot of people in the whiskey world use these as nosing glasses a lot of the master distillers at scotch distillers for example like a pretty large percentage of them don't use the glen cairn even though that is the classic scotch glass they they use a copita and the reason is because the longer stem gets them the opportunity to get their hand and any smells that might be coming from their hand away from the nose but it still has enough of a tulip shaped top in order to be able to kind of concentrate that nose and so this is very uh, very common glass you'll find especially in Europe in the whiskey world and the lines of it like I said are tulip shaped and very kind of elegant and flowy and so this is what he's referencing when he's naming this very curved and flowy knife the copita um, let's get has that action close kind of tight Wow, this feels so much like this. This is part of the reasons why I have this out. So this is, like I said, the Giant Mouse Ace Riv. This is a collaboration between Jesper Voxnase and Jens Anso, but this feels very Voxnasian, if you will. Like if you compare this to that F5.5, it, um, let me just get an F5.5. Okay, so this is an F5.5. This is a, a, well, I mean, they're all exclusives to Urban Easy Supply, but this is a Sagaiha version they did as a limited run. And you can see that, like, there's just so much in common between these knives. Like, the way this backspacer is designed and implemented, the way that the blade shape overall sits, these are just tremendously similar knives. And um, so even though this is a collab between Jesper and Anso, it's always felt very Voxian and it is made by Riot. Some of the Giant Mouse knives are made in Italy by MKM and these days a couple are made in China by Bestech. But these ones by Riot, um, they have a certain kind of feel to them and they feel different from the other ones. They, I, I think Riot knives, this is also a Riot knife by the way, I think Riot knives have a certain kind of precise tanky quality to them they're very sturdy and robust when they're thick and th they do on uh these micarta on one side titanium on the other ones other side ones um a, a certain kind of finish is this like bead blasty finish and you can see in um in here that there is a i don't know can i bounce light back up and let you actually see this i don't know how well you're going to see it but this is not just a sheet of of titanium there's actually a sorry a sheet of micarta there's actually a titanium liner that runs the entire length of this thing and i suspect that's what we're going to find over here because the construction of this just feels so incredibly similar yep yeah you, it's a lot easier to see on this one there is the because it, it doesn't come up to the edge as far on this it does run the entire length but it sits back a little bit do you see it right there now yeah so on this one it runs all the way up to the edge and so there is a full tie liner this entire way on this side Ooh, we have our little hybrid logo let's see if i zoom in yeah so that is vox's little bomb logo it looks different from the ones they've done in the past i can't see on my own camera super well usually uh jesper does oh maybe i'll be able to find it on this do they have it on this one yeah, there it is again. So there, ah, you can see it really well. That's the logo we're looking at. That is a combination of Jesper Voxnase's bomb logo and Urban EDC Supplies, the studio I have right there, their compass logo. So you combine those two things together and you have that hiding on the inside there. And it's the same thing that's hiding right here. It's just harder to see because the backspacer does not let me shine light up it. Okay, let's zoom back out. So unlike the Riv, the Riv is a reasonably, I don't know, sheep's foot, Warncliffe hybrid. It's one continuous arc like you'd find in a Warncliffe, but it's a very tall blade, which you kind of feel more on a sheep's foot. Anyway, this is a very me blade. I don't know if this is going to be a very me blade. It's kind of all belly. And uh, yeah, oh man, yeah, that's also a very common similarity. So these both have crown spines and forward placed jimping. That's kind of a hallmark of what M... Um, what, well, crown spines is a hallmark of kind of Italian knives, but even the Riot ones coming from Giant Mouse, they, they put on all of them because they're popular. They're, they're, I mean, sorry, they're fond of that. But this forward-facing jimping is another thing that Vox tends to do on all of his knives. And it means that it, if you... Here, I think I'm still zoomed in a little bit. It means that if you uh, <clears throat> you hold this in a pinch grip like this, 
again, this is a small knife and so it's designed to kind of nestle into your hand. Your finger lines right up here on this pot, spot and that's just uh, a lot, it makes just a lot more sense to have the jimping here than it does to be back here. If Especially if you're going to, ooh, okay, I'm finally holding this. If you hold it back like this, this is a three finger knife. And I'm finding that this clip is not the most comfortable in that position because it's pushing in a weird spot for me right there. But this forward cho finger choil is designed to be used. And as soon as I, yeah, that's the money. That's the money right there. The moment that I scoot this back, you can see that the pocket clip is landing in a much more natural spot in my hand, right behind this little spot and not pushing into this lump of my, my hand. And this this feels fantastic. This is such a small blade, but this feels full four finger grip, fantastic. This is a small enough knife that I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal to use this tip. Sometimes when it's an all belly knife, it's hard to use the tip. But another thing going on here is that it's all belly. It's not just like um, a, a lot of flat and then a bunch of belly all concentrated at the end. If, if, if they do a design like that, if it's all flat and all the belly is right at the end, you have to really roll up around that belly to get here. But by having the belly extend this entire way, it means that the blade is actually thinning out in this dimension. And so you actually get to use that tip pretty quickly. You're right. You're already at the tip right there. And so I don't think this is actually going to be bad for utility cuts at all. And sometimes full belly knives are. Man, this is Riot's claim to fame. They they are, well, a lot of things are their claim to fame, but these kind of really pronounced belt satin blades, oof, no one really does that quite like Riot. And you can see that that's what is on this micarta version. I don't know if it was on all of them. Let me pull that up real quick. No, it looks like the green micarta version, which also had a, looks like maybe brawn, no, brass, backspacer. Anyway, it looks like the, that had a stonewash blade, which is interesting to see. There's also a black version that had a blacked out blade, but the uh, full tie version and this natural micarta version have that gorgeous belt satin. And wow, is that ever pretty. The blade stuck on this is a little bit thick for a, a knife this small, uh, but it looks... It looks like it gets reasonably thin behind the edge. That looks to me not crazy thin, about 20 thousandths, but like that's pretty good. It might be 21, something like that. <clears throat> so I suspect that this isn't going to be the absolute most slicey knife in the world. I think it will cut through something like cardboard really, really well still. And this is one of those knives that's like, a lot of handle for a very small amount of cutting space. And so you're going to have a lot of power because you're going to have a full four finger grip and a lot of a really good secure grip and you're going to have a lot of force behind it. So if you do have to push a little bit harder through something, I think you're going to get through it just fine. They also did a pretty sturdy tip up here. Like this doesn't thin out crazy thin. If we compare that over here to this baby Barlow, like, yeah, we're getting much, much thinner on that down at the tip. Uh, if we compare that to something like this, so this is thinner blade stock to begin with. This is, I think this is 0.125 or something like that. So this must be 0.1375. I could be wrong, but I think that's probably what that is. And it's probably three and a half millimeters. And you can see that the, the rib definitely comes to a more thin, precise Q-tip, especially as you roll down. And that's because the, this dropping tip right here means that the tip is actually really far down on the grind and the grind is what's thinning out the knife and so that's why this thins all the way down. That's part of the reason why I love this knife because it is actually a really fantastic slicer. It comes to quite thin behind the edge and it stays thin up here and so I, I think this is really really a me knife. I'm not sure if this is going to be a really really me knife but I do love the way it looks. One of the things that's interesting, Vox has made a lot of different knives but they they often have kind of these sturdy stout looks to them and I love that about them and this as sturdy and stout as it is has a kind of surprising level of curve and flow and the fact that this actually depending on I mean depending on how you hold this you could argue that this is actually a like an upswept Persian blade because if you look it actually does curl upward this way and you can see that the the grind itself even though the the lines are all staying perfectly flat parallel this way the actual like plane of it is curving up this way. And so the angle is going to be like, um, it's not going to be like a, uh, it's not going to be a flat plane like this. It's actually going to be tilted at an angle, curving as it's going and curling in, which is really, really cool. And that's how they're keeping the um, behind the edge thickness up here as thin as it is. And the way they're keeping that this bevel the same. A lot of times if you have a thick 
this thick of a blade up here, you're gonna find that people have a very um, wide bevel at the top because they're just cutting at a consistent angle the entire way. But they're doing, a, like, Riyadh is just very, very good at this. They know exactly what they're doing. And so they're able to maintain a an edge bevel thickness that is perfectly consistent the entire way, despite the fact that it is way thinner down here than it is right here. That's, that's really impressive to see. Um, Vox is also not known for these kinds of, like, ornate details as much. And I just think it's really, honestly, very beautiful. It has almost like an Irish knot thing going on, but it also, I mean, that Irish knot thing, it just kind of reminds me of knots. And it kind of reminds me of like rope and, and shipping knots. And that's very Voxian. He tends to make sailor knives. He, he goes out of his way to say that that's like a large part of the inspiration to him. And so this does definitely remind me of the kinds of knots you see tied up uh, uh, at the dock or something like that. Um, <clears throat> the clip on this is actually pretty interesting. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of clips will have some kind of in cut into like, uh, like a recessed part cut into the scale to make it so that they don't swivel, but it's rare to find one that's shaped like this. So let's right off the bat, this is reversible to both sides and there is this little filler to fill it in. But look at that. This is such an interesting shape. It's not just a, like a a pill shape or something like that. It actually has this plus sign and that's, it, it helps mirror this uh, kind of four-way pattern right there. I think it's a really nice tie-in. Um, I'm guessing because this is dual keyed like this, that depending on how you're holding this when you're tightening it, this will align different ways. I might, as the OCD person that I am, I'm not actually OCD, but as like the OCD-esque person that I am, I might go out of my way to get this pivot tension at the right spot while this is simultaneously kind of better aligned with this. But at the same time, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it does that. You can see that that's how that's mounting in right there. And it means that it absolutely will not wobble to and fro on that way. It's also cool that they're doing a deep carry clip at all. Um, <clears throat> it's not that he's opposed to deep carry clips, but you can see that he, he when he does them, he doesn't always put them very far back over here. He's done a deep carry clip. It's actually, it could be a little bit further back. That's actually not that bad. This is pretty good. But uh, I would, I would, I would personally, I like when deep carry clips come up all the way. I, I don't, I don't know how you could avoid this. I suppose since you can take the clip off like that, you could scoot this up over that and just create an order of operations where you have to remove the clip before you can get at that back screw. Um, yeah, they probably could have done that. Uh, one thing that I know Vox does a lot is have this thing. This is a cardinal sin of mine. Uh, Vox is one of my absolute favorite designers in spite of the fact that he does this cardinal sin of mine all the time. He very frequently creates a lanyard hole, period, I don't like lanyard holes, that is created by making the backspacer protrude out of the the back of the scales. I, I hate this on knives because what it does is it concentrates all of the force that would be pushing into your palm onto a much smaller spot, and it often introduces sharp corners. And one of my complaints about the riv is that these corners are pointy. They're just hard, sharp corners. They're not like literally sharp, like they're going to cut you, but they're just, they're hard edges that are poking into you. I think it's done better over here on the F5.5 and because you can see there's these little chamfers on all of these corners and so they've knocked those back. So this is a lot more comfortable. Let's see how they're doing it over here. This, yeah, okay, there you go. If you compare this to this, this one here to that, it's way, way better done. And the big reason why is because there's this big, thick chamfer that entire way. So that, these are still a little bit hard, but this is cutting that corner off entirely. So that just feels a lot nicer. The other thing he's doing is you see how this comes to a corner? So this is just a corner, you know? It's not that it's sharp, but it's just a corner. It's a hard angle that pushes into your hand. This is nice and smooth. So does this bug me at all? Nope. <laughs> so sometimes, oh, yeah, actually that feels freaking amazing. I know that I was holding it earlier like this with this part and the, the palm and my finger on that jimping, but I actually like this better, I think, curled up forward, my finger all the way up at the tip, this resting, this, this curve here resting into my palm, and my thumb right on the pivot. That feels so locked in, so controlled, so good. I love the way that feels. And this back doesn't hurt me at all. There's no jabby. That's so cool. Ah, okay. Let me try and experience the action a little bit more. Oh, okay. Right there. So 
One of the things that's cool about the Riv and the Giant Mouse lineup is that it has a detent ball ramp. Where is my little demonstration stick, aka a toothpick? Uh, right there, get that to focus, do you see that little dip down right there? So that's a detent ball ramp. And that is a little ramp carved into the blade that helps you so that you, when you go to close the knife, if you don't have this pushed out of the way, like if you're pushing this out of the way, you will, you will push past that. But if you don't have that, this helps you pop up onto that blade tang right there. So rather than pushing over up under the blade tang, you actually have this little ramp to assist you. And the version that they did on the Riv, I think it was the first time that a giant mouse knife had it. And none of the, the, the ones that they did after this also didn't have it. So it was just kind of an odd anomaly. At this point, they've done it on a couple other ones, but I think all of the ones coming from Riyadh only. And the version that they did here is good, but not great because there's still this like pop up on. And what I'm seeing here is that's done markedly better. So What's what's different is that this is just deeper. It might it's subtle, so it might not look like it's meaningfully deeper, but it's deeper enough. Ooh, that is really nice. That when you go to push on this, there's no bump up on. Yeah, that's great. You do feel yourself pushing up the ramp, but there's no popping to get onto the ramp. And the top of the ramp is right there. There's a little bit of a bump off of the ramp, but generally speaking, this is a very well implemented detent ball ramp. Now detent ball ramps are good for this type of closing specifically, where you go like this, push it over slightly, and then push the blade home with your finger. Or of course, any other way that you might push the blade home, you know, if you're pushing it like this with your other hand or something like that. They're, they're not always good for fall to your nail type thing, because sometimes you can land on the blade. You see how I'm landing there and it's kind of pushing back out? That's that's this um, pushing like this and then being pushed back up by that ramp. Now it's gonna be interesting. This is such a small nub down here. I'm curious to see if this actually can fall. Ooh, it's very tight right now. Sometimes Riot knives just come very, very tight. I might just wanna adjust this a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely doing the thing where this is catching on my thumb right above that, or not quite at the top of that. Can I make it fall to my nail down here? Um, yeah, maybe. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, I'm getting caught on that. What if I move my thumb right there? Technically, that's kind of awkward to do. I think this is just uh, a little bit tight. Let me loosen this just a smidge. I'm guessing this is going to be a T8. It sure looks like a T8. So I, I don't know which side is going to be the screw and which side is going to be the pivot. Let's try this one. Well, this is dual keyed, like I said, and it's, it is indeed tight enough that I would need to. So I'm not going to be able to do that, and it's not worth me bothering on video. The click is amazing. Actually that right there, me just turning it a little bit, even though both sides turned, is I think enough to make this fall a little bit better. Yeah, that's already much nicer. So a lot of Riot knives I find need to be tuned just a little bit and they come really tight from the factory. Ooh, I am noticing right there that this has a lot of lock bar sensitivity. So does this. This has enough lock bar sensitivity that if you're putting, you're pushing pressure there, you kind of can't pull it out at all. You have to really, really work at it. And so this, not a, it's, it's, it's a medium detent, but if you put your finger on the lock bar, yeah, that locks right up. So how easy is it to keep my fingers off that lock bar? Uh, I'd say like when I just pick this up, my natural tendency is to put my finger on the lock bar. Yeah. And that's kind of locking it up. That sucks. Uh, but can I teach myself to do it differently? Can I hold it there? Nope. Still in the lock bar. What about there? That works great. Uh, is this clip long enough that I can hold it on the clip? Yeah, certainly. Not the most intuitive direction. What happens if I just don't use my that finger? Yeah, that works too. If I just kind of like leave this off and just hold it with those. Uh, it's a very small flipper tab. Look at that. And it leans back. This is definitely something that you can't push button. Well, you can't, can. You'll just be pushing on this platform. And the difference between that and a light switch becomes pretty... I mean, I don't know. It's just a matter of how much follow through you have when you drag back. You can definitely light switch that. And you can just kind of like rolling push button that. That flick is fantastic. A really, really nice flick. I am finding that closing it is not the most fun in the world because this little nub right there is uh, making it so it's it's not easy one-handed, super easy one-handed to get um, 
past that and close home that way. So I think this is gonna be the kind of knife that I'm gonna push home with my fingers. This is actually what I do over here too. Um, this one, I, I, you can fall past it, but it's really not easy to do. And so I tend to close the rib by just going like this and pushing it home. And because it's so smooth, I actually really like that mo method of closing. I'll roll around my hand like that and just push it like that. And it feels really, really nice. I suspect that's what I'm going to be doing here too. I'll just push it over and close it. Yeah, that feels great. Okay. So let's, oh, actually, before I do that, oh yeah, look at where that, that uh, placement is. So this is the stop pin right there. And you can see that in the, the closed position, it's actually hitting right here, right there on the inside. That's cool. It's not hitting it down here on this flat part. And then on the open position, it's actually hiding down here inside this channel and hitting right there. So that's going up and over. That's always fun to see. It's just kind of a cool look. Um, yeah, so let's bring these back out because I think at this point we have quite a lot of tiny knives. I believe that this one is two and a quarter inch blade. Is that right? Yeah, two and a quarter inch. This one's two inch. Um, oh, I love the new whole version of the Nerd. Yeah, these are our tiny knives. Could probably arrange these better. I don't know, I don't have enough room. There we go, that makes more sense. No, maybe this? I don't know how I wanna organize them, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay, so my reaction to this is that I think it is really, really well done, but I don't know if it's the most me knife from a blade shape perspective itself. I'm not 100% sure if this will stick around, but I do actually, I really, really, really like it. Um, my reaction to this is that I adore the ever-living heck out of it. This is a super duper me knife. Also, at some point, I'll probably take this apart because of the way that they implemented the inside, the um, like the bearing raceway washers and the like stop travel hybrid part. There's a metal insert that's like a interesting 3D mill shape that I've not seen done anywhere else. It's actually really cool how they're doing that too. So anyway, yeah, my end, end of the day takeaway on this is I, I think this is really, really nice, but it's, it's just shape wise, not necessarily super duper me. So I don't know if it'll stick around. I absolutely love, freaking love this. They're both very, very well done, but this is just a super me knife. Um, I think this is uh, finally good competition. I think all of these are in a similar price range and going to be really good competition with each other. And if you want something that is as good as all of these in function, but at a budget price range, the Baby Banter is still just an absolutely baller knife. So I wanted to film a quick update on this before I posted it because I've had this for a few weeks now and I've been using this as my primary package opener because I just cannot put it down. I cannot get enough of this thing. I absolutely adore it. I think this is without a doubt the best small box cuttery fifth pocket knife that has ever been made. Now, if you want a more general purpose slicer and if you care about better ergonomics, the TRM Nerd, especially now that it has this hole, is probably still the king to beat. It's also thinner and lighter, but it's worth noting that the blade stock isn't any thinner. This has spectacular ergos and actually does have a pretty low down tip, but I think it's a more general purpose slicer. Now that it has the hole and it's flickable, the action is fantastic on the open, but it's still always going to be that tight washer close. And some people love that, but over here, the fact that this is able to do that Holy crap, I have such little amount of shake into that and it goes home with such a light blade. I, it's so fun to play with and I just, I can't get over it. Now, I've been using this for weeks, like I said, and it works fantastically for me, but I was talking to Kevin, aka Left EDC, and he was saying that he was having difficulty using the tip and making a clean cut. It was more kind of ripping. I would have believed him either way, but he actually showed in his video what he's talking about, and you can see it. And it's just because that's just not been the case for me. This is the kind of thing he was cutting into, and I just cut all these right now. I'll, I'll show you again. This is what this does for me. It's like perfect clean cut right at the tip. So like I said, it's you can see it in his video. It's not like he's making it up or anything like that. It's just not been my experience. I've absolutely adored this and I think it is effectively perfect. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Urban EDC Supply has been generous enough to me to give me a affiliate link. So if you like the cool, you know, collaborations that they do that they that no one else has because they're the only people going out of their way to make these knives occur in the world by by pairing up with cool makers. And then feel free to use my uh, affiliate link. I think they're a really cool company. Um, 
And yeah, if you do use the affiliate link, it gets me uh, a small commission of your order, which is awesome. It doesn't cost you anything. If you don't want to use mine, there's plenty of other channels that got affiliate links. And I do recommend you use someone's affiliate link because like I said, it doesn't cost you anything. And it's just a nice way of giving monetary support to people that make content that you like. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.